long before breast density legislation was even on the horizon, a group of us became very passionate about developing an option for women with dense breast tissue that would overcome some of the limitations of mammography in the dense breast. We know that MRI, for instance, does a wonderful job detecting breast cancer, whether the tissue is dense or not, but MRI is a very costly and complex modality, and it really isn't practical to do an MRI on the 50% of women who have dense breasts as a screening tool. It's very appropriate to do it in a subset of very high-risk women, but we really didn't have a good option for women with dense breasts who were not in this high-risk category. So uh, in partnering with um, some medical physicists, some brilliant medical physicists um, in the Department of Radiology, Michael O'Connor and Carrie Rushka, uh, as well as some very dedicated radiologists in breast imaging, we worked to develop this um, approach to breast density which uses gamma radiation instead of X radiation. And the beauty of that is that Gamma rays are not, uh, the detection of gamma rays are, are not, it's not impaired in the dense breast. So through multiple iterations of this technology, uh, we now have a system that can rapidly image the breast at a very low dose of radiation that is comparable to what one would get from uh, what's called a 3D mammogram now. And we obtained a grant from the Komen Foundation to study molecular breast imaging in a group of women who were presenting for their annual mammogram and had dense breast tissue on their prior mammogram. And we had a way of sending a letter to every woman coming to Mayo Clinic who'd had breast density on her prior mammogram and inviting her to participate. And we got a very high response rate from this. And women would come and they'd have their mammogram and they'd have their molecular breast image. And the two images were interpreted independently by their breast imaging radiologists. And we imaged uh, uh, over 1,600 women in our study who were coming in. They had no breast symptoms. They had no uh, particular breast concerns. They were just coming in for screening. And then we followed them for a period of a year after that imaging to determine who developed cancer also after the imaging um, up through that next year of follow-up. And overall, we found that molecular breast imaging detected almost four times as many cancers as mammography did in the dense breast. And this is somewhat of a stunning result, I think, uh, for two reasons. First, uh, many studies of mammography in assessing sensitivity use the next annual mammogram to determine what was missed. And as you can imagine, if you can't see it on the first mammogram, <laughs> you might not be able to see it even a year later on the mammogram. And so there's potentially a whole reservoir of cancer that you're still missing with that follow-up mammogram. And that's what we strongly suspected, and I think that's what this study really, really demonstrates, is that we, mammography was finding about a quarter of all breast cancers in this group of women with dense breast tissue. In this study, by adding MBI, we unmasked all of those tumors that were not being appreciated on the mammogram or even the next mammogram. And that's why the sensitivity of mammography looked relatively poor in this study. I think it illustrates that x-rays are not a good technique to find cancers in a dense breast because there's no way to distinguish visually between the tumor and the surrounding density. The other thing we found in this study is that MBI did very well detecting tumors. And that really speaks to this different functional approach of finding them. Because this technique requires an injection of something called Sestamibi, a tracer used commonly in cardiac stress testing, this tracer is preferentially taken up by tumors and not by the background normal tissue. And so you're actually using a tumor's own behavior to detect it. And that's what really distinguishes this technology. It's not depending on the anatomical distinction of a tumor from the background tissue. It's depending on the molecular behavior 
of tumors. And that's why we were able to detect so many more than mammography did.